We have a lot to talk about today. The Bank of Japan just put out a major signal that the worst may be behind us. Bitcoin is already rallying really strongly off the back of this news. Many altcoins, for example, Solana, are now breaking out of their downtrends to the upside. Meme coins have started exploding again, continuing where they left off before the dip. And in general, market sentiment is much improved from what it was a couple of days ago. But is this a true reversal? Is the worst actually behind us or is this just a fake out? And what can you do in your portfolio today to ensure that you are well positioned for what comes next? We're going to discuss all of that and more in today's video, run over the major macro news, which is triggering this quick recovery. And I'm also going to talk about the moves that I am personally making in my portfolio. I did make a very big positional move today which I want to run you through and the reason why I did make that move and also talk about a lot of the altcoins which are now starting to present new opportunities, which is really exciting because before we got the dip, there actually wasn't that much opportunity in the market aside from the meme coins, whereas now many charts have been reset and there are signs that we're actually forming a brand new range which could be home to many trading opportunities. So let's talk about it. I want to remind you that if you do want to trade, there's a link in the description below to Blowfin. It's a non-KYC exchange and we have a very cool campaign right now and it's good timing because Solana is one of the strongest assets where you can win $10 of Sol for free just by signing up and depositing $100 using the link in the description below and you can also spin the lucky wheel if you sign up to potentially win 15 Sol which is valued over $2,000. And the more you trade, the more spins you can get. You can use the link in the description below to access that campaign and get yourself a nice little Solana airdrop and the chance of winning a much, much bigger Solana airdrop. So why did the market continue its rally today and not just puke some of the gains that it made after the obviously major correction that we got on Saturday and Sunday? Well, the primary reason was this. As you can see in front of you, the Bank of Japan came out and made some dovish statements just days after their hawkish shift sent shockwaves through the market and resulted in the unwinding of the yen carry trade. You can see in front of you, the yen dropped 1% to 145.71. I think it's even lower now at the time of recording this video on the Bank of Japan's remarks. They said that the policy path will obviously change if market volatility view on risks change. Market reaction to single piece of US data appears too big. See no big change in Japan, US economic fundamentals. Market moves are extremely volatile. Watching impact must maintain the current degree of easing for the time being. Won't raise rates, and this was the major line that got the markets excited, when the market is unstable. Let me summarize this. The Bank of Japan Deputy Governor sent a strong dovish signal in the wake of historic financial market volatility. As you guys know, the VIX hit levels not seen since the pandemic crash of March 2020 and the global GFC of 2008. That was the magnitude of the dip on the weekend of the Monday for equities. Crazy volatility in the market uh, across the world and in Japan by pledging to refrain from hiking interest rates when the markets are unstable. The yen weakened by more than 2% against the dollar and stocks rebounded immediately after his comments, which were the first public remarks by a BOJ board member since the bank raised rates on July 31st. This comes just eight days after the rate hike, which resulted in the yen going up in value, which had huge shockwaves across the global economy, marking one of the sharpest pivots that I can remember in recent times. He said, I believe that the bank needs to maintain monetary easing with the current policy interest rate for the time being, with developments in financial and capital markets at home and abroad being extremely volatile. Basically, the easiest way to summarize this is to say, they realized what a shit show they created and they decided to pull the Uno reverse card here. And I think a lot of the risks in the market that resulted in the massive downturn that we did see were based on the fact 
that this carry trade could continue to worsen, resulting in a continued collapse across equities. And also that was combining with geopolitical tensions, which, mind you, aren't fully eased, but it did happen at once to create the perfect storm. That's something I discussed on my show a couple of days ago. Fajal comments on this by saying, with the Bank of Japan put in place, the Fed fully set for at least 25 basis points cut in September and other global central banks already cutting. We have now reached Vol Controller Nirvana, a global coordinated easing cycle. When all global central banks ease at once, the rate differentials remain constant, which makes FX issues like we've seen this week much less likely. As you guys know, many of the issues were created due to the fact that the Japanese dollar was rising in value. Japan parks a lot of its capital in the US market, specifically in US treasuries. So when rates increased in Japan, having money parked in US treasuries seems a lot less attractive. But if all governments ease at once instead of having certain governments going a bit more hawkish on policy than others. This basically creates constant conditions which cause less volatility in the markets than when you have certain countries making really rash moves like we did see for from the BOJ. You can see actually as a result of all of this global uncertainty, the likelihood of a September cut for the Fed is pretty much guaranteed. There's a chance we get a double rate cut, so a 50 basis point cut. That chance is now above 50% versus the 25 basis point scenario, which is now down to 36%. So the odds have increased substantially in the last month, obviously due to some of the latest economic data that we've got, but also the events of the last week. So, you know, it's funny, although in the short term, the saga that happened across the weekend really spooked markets. In the slightly longer term, if you're looking at it from the perspective of risk on assets, which thrive in lower interest environments, the volatility that was caused by those events actually signaled to the Fed that it can't be too harsh with policy and that it probably does need to ease, which only increases the likelihood of deeper cuts, which is good for markets. So maybe that was the necessary canary in the coal mine, so to speak, to get these central banks on the same page that they do need to ease or there might be something really devastating coming for markets in the future, which is now the response that we're starting to see from the BOJ and the Fed as well. And this is also coming in an election year. Do you really think, and also made this point during my show when we were talking about the crash in the midst of it, do you really think that Kamala or Trump on the eve of getting elected want to crash the stock market? Because there's so many ripple effects to not only the American economy, but the working labor economy from having a weakened stock market. They don't want to be risking that at the time of an election. They're playing for votes right now. They want healthy markets on the surface, even if that's just a temporary facade to cover up something more sinister brewing below. They want healthy markets at the time of an election. Speaking of the election, Donald Trump, 52%, according to Polymarket. Kamala Harris, 47%. The race is tightening. This is a big, big event for not only equities, but I would say more so crypto, considering there is a wide belief out there. And I also subscribe to this belief that a Donald Trump presidency, given some of the promises that he's made, is going to be a lot stronger than a Kamala presidency for crypto, given the fact that he said things like, you know, he'll fire Gary Gensler, who's been coming after crypto. He's going to look at creating a Bitcoin strategic reserve. I just generally think the Republicans are more open to the idea of crypto. So let's see how this one unfolds. There's still another couple of months. This is obviously going to cause a lot of volatility, but it's become a more even race. And that is one of the reasons that I pointed out for the dip, actually. Not this extended part of the dip where we saw capitulation across markets, but this initial cool-off post the Trump rally actually happened in tandem with Kamala's odds shooting up and obviously the sell the news, sell pressure that came from people that bought into the, the Trump event and sold after he started speaking. This caused that initial weakness and then obviously that massive wick to the downside was caused by uncertainty over the weekend. By the way, definitely keep watching this video because I'll tell you whether I think 
this is just going to be a recovery that shoots straight back up into the old Bitcoin range or whether I think you should be cautious right now and maybe even look at selling. I'll talk about that in a minute. So to recap, the likelihood of a cut is now pretty much guaranteed. We may even get a 50 basis point cut. NASDAQ futures off the back of the Bank of Japan news are also up. So we're likely to see extended gains in the stock market, which is obviously good signs. Let's see what happens on open. Of course, that'll be happening around the time of uploading this video. It's often a volatile time for markets, but at least things are looking upwards. One of the other reasons we saw continued strength in crypto today is because there has been some news on the TradFi side that Morgan Stanley has been telling wealth advisors that they can pitch Bitcoin ETFs, which is obviously a major development because if these funds are shilling Bitcoin and Ethereum to their clients, this adds an additional passive bid that we've never really seen before for, for markets via the ETFs. Will Clemente comments here saying, easing cycle, potential Trump victory, Shilling clients Bitcoin bullishness for this year was always focused on H2 and Q4, specifically patience, he says. And if you do look at the quarterly returns, Q4, purely from a cyclical and seasonality perspective, is typically a much better quarter than Q3. In fact, Q3, right, and that's what we're currently in, is crypto's weakest quarter on average by far. In fact, Q4 is over a 12x stronger in terms of average returns. So if things were ever going to line up for a, a historic crypto rally, that rally is probably going to be starting in Q4. And weakness was always likely going to happen in Q3, just based on the data. So shakeouts like this are golden opportunities. Something I mentioned on the show two days ago, something I mentioned on my Twitter during the dip, buying fear and selling into fear of missing out, especially during a time like this is going to be your best strategy in the market. And I made my biggest Bitcoin buy ever, as I mentioned on the show, during the crash at $50,000. That is a long-term position, but I just had to pull the trigger on that. Ethereum and Solana as three of my major positions on that dip. And those buys are looking pretty good now, but it's not about those buys. It's about the consistent strategy that you can implement to make money in this market. And it's proven once again, that that strategy is buying fear in the face of a market meltdown, market panic, when the headlines start to tick negative, that is when to buy and conversely sell when there is fear of missing out. But you guys probably know that already if you're watching the channel because I've been preaching that for a long time. So let's now talk about the shorter term price action. I'm back to daily shows. So these shows can now cover um, more of a range of longer term and shorter term topics. Should you be trusting this pump that is happening today? What is my take on the pump? What moves am I making given this recent market move? Well, the first move that I'm taking is the contrary one. And that's actually taking some profits off the table. So before you flame me in the comments and say, look, oh, Miles, you're not bullish on crypto. Like, of course I'm bullish on crypto, mid to long term. But in the short term, I do believe that... If you were really worried during the dip and the dip scared you and you didn't buy, that's likely because you're underweight stable coins. And if you are underweight stable coins, you are now getting an opportunity to fix your portfolio. You've been almost given a golden gift here. Ask yourself, were there altcoins that you were holding during the dip that you don't have conviction in? If that is the case, then you can use this market rally as an opportunity to shift out of low conviction assets into high conviction assets and condense your portfolio. Now, even though I did manage to buy the dip on majors, I still was holding some low conviction positions, which I was forced to hold during the dip because I didn't want to sell during the panic. That's just not really a strategy I subscribe to that. I didn't manage to de-risk on my initial de-risking of the 60 K breakdown. Those positions I'm now looking to offload. I started selling yesterday. I'm continuing to sell into strength today. Could they go higher over the next few weeks? Maybe, but I don't really care because I'm shifting my positions into high conviction stuff. And I'll get into in a second what the high conviction stuff is, but this is a good opportunity for you. If let's say you hold no stable coins, this could be a chance for you to just trim the fat, get a nice 10 to 20% stable coin waiting in your portfolio to protect 
in case we end up going back down again. Because there is a chance we end up going back down to range low again. I'll mention in a second how a new range may be forming. But nonetheless, if that is the case, th there's always a chance that we do have weakness and go and test range low. I don't know if it's going to happen. However, you have to be prepared for that scenario. So let's talk about these scenarios. In my Discord, Paradise, who's our amazing low time frame trader, he outlines two potential eventualities right now. And these are just as relevant now as they were a few hours ago when he posted this. The Mars High Club is where I post all the latest updates and our contributors also post their continuous alpha throughout the day. Boy, was it a crazy day in the community a couple of days ago. I literally spent 12 hours online just helping people through the dip because it was pretty crazy. But I hope we help people manage their portfolios during that period because everyone wanted to panic sell. A lot of people wanted to just dump during that Asia open when Bitcoin was 50k, but I'm glad we were able to calm and steady the ship a bit because now your portfolios likely are looking much better. But that was also a really cool day, not because of the dip. The dip obviously sucked, but it was cool to see the community band together and support each other because that was the entire premise behind launching the Discord community. It was to have a place that really serious traders could come together and uh, join forces and help each other out. Paradise outlines. Two scenarios. One, we reject around here, maybe one more push up to the 60k region and form a range over the coming days and weeks. Let's run through this scenario. So when he says form a range, he means range low is 49k. Let me just clean up my charts a little bit here by getting rid of this stuff. Range high is 60k, which is roughly up here. And this is the new range that we are in until proven. Otherwise, something like this, push up, impulse, rejection. Maybe we come back down, fill this gap, and we chop around in this range until we're able to reclaim 60. That is definitely a scenario that you have to keep in mind as Bitcoin continues to show strength into the 60K region. The old range, which was 60 to 73, which just got broken, that range is obviously still there. So there is a chance, which is scenario number two, that we flip the H4 trend break that level and we have a continuation play back into the range and that would be deviation like this. So let me map out scenario number two. Basically, we come back up here and it's a reclaim play. However, until we get bullish confirmation above 60, it's probably wise not to get too bullish. Why? Because if you're buying here, and this is just my honest opinion, right? If you're buying here, you're buying into resistance. 58 to 60 is resistance, where you may see a potential rejection. It's generally better to buy extremities. So the time to buy was when people were panicking during this liquidation wick. Generally speaking, the time to buy is also when you're at major support of a range, as we discussed, because you have invalidation below. Even I was buying altcoins on this dip here. And when we got invalidated below, I had a confluence of the 200 MA and the range low to de-risk a lot of those positions. It's also important to have invalidations. If you are buying here, it's hard to have an invalidation because for me, the next low is 50K. And this is quite a gap for altcoins. On many alts, this is now a 30 to 40% bounce, especially for trading the meme coins. So the two scenarios are we come up and we form a range. To me, this is slightly more likely a rejection around 60k than an impulse straight through the bottom of the previous range and then a reclaim. However, if we do end up getting that scenario, there'll be ample time to reposition in altcoins because what's likely going to happen is you'll get some squeeze through 60 and then you'll get a retrace, which is an opportunity to actually buy at 60k again. And then you have your invalidation below 60. If you want to be safe, you could have it around 58k. Um, just in case we, you know, have little wicks under that level. So those are the two scenarios that I'm watching right now. I just want to make this point. Now is definitely, if you're a trader, especially a time to be focusing quite heavily on the market. Now is not a time to be checking out. We are actually at a critical point where Bitcoin is about to decide whether it wants to form a new range. If it does, that's going to open up massive opportunities for a shorts into the top of the range and profit-taking on spot positions, basically the same as a short with no leverage, right? 
spying at the bottom of a range if we do get back down to range low. Uh, Ansem even pointed out the fact that he thinks we're going to get another shot at the lows. I don't know, right? That's why I'm just taking some profits and taking it easy here until Bitcoin confirms. But nonetheless, once we get a confirmation on Bitcoin, there's going to be a lot of trading opportunities which, which come from it, which I'll obviously share on the show. So make sure you have your notification bell turned on. And I 100% agree with Doc here saying that he's excited by the market reset. It was pretty hard to position before the dip. It was meme coins rallying. The only narrative was Ethereum. We were buying into mid-range, which is obviously not a place you want to be. You want to be buying at the support of a range or selling at the top of a range, generally speaking, which made it really hard to trade and manage risk. Now we're getting opportunities potentially to bid positions with better invalidations at better prices, which I really, really like those kind of setups in the market. Now let's look at what alts bounce the strongest, because these are the alts that I'm focusing my attention on. A, if we do break above 60, right, and reclaim, these are the altcoins that I'll be bidding. B, if we end up rejecting and making another move lower, these are the altcoins that I'll be bidding on a major dip. You can play this both ways. Trend continuation, which is waiting for a bullish trend to establish, that will likely be a reclaim above 60 and altcoins breaking through the levels that they lost and retesting those levels, that can be validation for a trade. Or we can just come back down and nuke back down and that can also be validation for a trade. But these are the altcoins in either scenario that I'll be buying. And it's very simple. The altcoins that I want to be buying and trading, because this isn't just long-term, I also do short-term trading, both spot and low leverage, are the altcoins that exhibited the most strength on the bounce. Every time you get a major shakeout and a major reversal, the market is showing you its hand. These are the tokens that are likely to outperform on the next show of strength. Firstly, it's the meme coins. This narrative hasn't gone away. I've spoken about it a lot. I've been banging the drum about meme coins. The relative strength on meme coins is still here even post dip. It's the same narratives, guys, from pre-dip that are the strongest post dip. Many of the cat coins, Popcat, Michi, Mog are performing really well. Nero on Ethereum is performing amazingly. Many other altcoins which were popular before, like NPC, are also pumping. If you go into Velo, you can see this is a great gauge that I like to use to find strength outliers. Whiff, Mew, these are some of the strongest performers for the day on centralized exchanges. I like looking at centralized data as well because that is where a lot of retail trades. Most retail isn't trading on Solana DEXs because they either don't know how or they can't be bothered. Let's look at a few specifically. Popcat has started to reclaim its 45 cent level, which is a key level. Had a really strong reversal from the liquidation wick down to where it is now. It's up 140%. If you've ever looked for a show of strength, it's that. So PopCut is definitely towards the top of my list for the two scenarios that I outlined before. The second one is Mog. It actually hasn't moved up as much as PopCat, but I do believe fundamentally this is maybe slightly stronger. It's, it's line ball. Both have strong communities, but I really do like Mog as a trade. And it was the top cat coin two days ago, but it's now fallen into third place. Michi and Mog, for me, are the two best value out of the top five. These are the ones where I'm most interested from a spot perspective, but from a trading relative strength perspective, you can't deny PopCat either. Also from a relative strength perspective, you can't deny Nero on Ethereum. Say what you want about Nero, the narrative is here to stay, and I think this continues to go higher, just purely based on price action, purely based on the trend and the narrative, and a lot of people are talking about it, and that is usually a recipe for continuation when, they, when a token doesn't have many major exchange listings. Moving on from this, Solana was another clear outlier on the bounce. I told you during the dip, I was buying major spot Bitcoin as my biggest position. And then as my second and third biggest positions, I was buying Ethereum and Solana. Now, obviously all of them are up. Bitcoin and ETH are up 10% on the day, but Solana's up 24%. And from the bottom of its liquidation wick, it's up 40%, which for a major, might seem small compared to PopCat or Mog, whatever, but for a major, that's that that's big news. And you can also see it's now reclaiming this trend here 
by showing a very strong breakout. If we do get a retest of this level, this may be a secondary area to bid. But Solana is definitely a strong one that on major dips I'm looking at accumulating. Obviously, that's what we got a couple of days ago. Solana dominance continues to increase. Nachi says here, the conclusion of this is just by Sol. He's referring to the strongest bounce list from the bottom of the dip. Strongest returns off the bottom, especially taking into account project maturity, safety, liquidity, and volatility. Even memes can't beat it. Flight to safety is key right now. Other one, another trader I respect says, still think it's going to take a few more weeks to fix the damage on majors. Having said that, salt to ETH market cap repricing, which is roughly a 4x, is too obvious to ignore. The ETH holders cope is justified, but what can you do? Sol is simply mispriced. Let's compare them again where market caps are more even in a 3 to 4x from here. Interestingly, just like I discussed in, in my video last week discussing Solana, we did end up, Sol price is lower since then, but what is higher and what did break out, which is something I was watching, is the Sol ETH chart. So Solana Ethereum has broken through a major level on the weekly. So Solana is actually continuing to gain strength against Ethereum. If this level holds, I think Solana will continue to rapidly reprice against ETH because that's the narrative right now. And it's going parabolic on, on the Solana ETH chart. So in terms of playing any majors, it's obvious that the best major to play is still Solana in the market over ETH. Although I don't mind ETH either, considering we are seeing some positive flows from the ETFs and it hasn't had you know a big post ETF run like Bitcoin. I still think that could be on the cards for ETH, which would be great for the altcoin market. But it just hasn't run as hard yet. But I guess the good news on Ethereum, and I'll show you the charts now, is that it did respond quite strongly from the bottom of the wick, bounced off a major support level. It's up 20%. But the level I'm really watching on Ethereum for a continuation play, first is reclaiming 2800. It really needs to reclaim 2800 for me. 2800 is the level for salt and 60k is the level for Bitcoin for a bullish SR reclaim. If you do want to get your hands on some Solana, you can win 15 Sol just by spinning the lucky wheel for signing up and depositing $100. You don't need to spend or trade this $100. You just need to keep it in your account until the end of the campaign period in six days time. You're going to get a free $10 Sol airdrop for doing so. You're going to get a free spin of the wheel for the first 100 users. You do still have time to participate in this. And the more you trade, the more lucky spins you get. You can actually spin a hundred times and potentially win multiple prizes. It's not just Sol, it's Whiff. We're giving away Pepe as well and even 0.1 Bitcoin. And at the end of the campaign period, you can just take your money off the exchange and keep your free Sol. So that is a good one if you're looking for some additional Sol exposure. Another thing Anson points out is looking at the ecosystem. My favorite pick out of all of these is probably Jupiter. Th these are also tokens that rallied quite well off the lows. As you can see, Solana DeFi up 22%. Layer 1's up 19%. This is a great image if you want to look at some of the strong bounces. The outliers are Solana, Sui, Pendle in RWA, Mantra Ondo, Tau. There are a few others here as well that you can look at and add to your list. Pepe. These are all the sorts of coins you want to be looking at when you want to open your next trade. Hopefully you guys found this video valuable. I'll leave a link in the description below to Blofin if you want to check it out and get your hands on some free soul. I'm going to keep you updated as things change, as I open trades, as I reposition. At least now we are getting some trading opportunities, which is a major blessing considering the market we did have pre-dip, which was pretty damn boring. I'll see you in the next one. Have a lovely rest of your day. Pat on the back for surviving the worst crypto crash since FTX in 2022 and coming out the other side even stronger. Peace out.